Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 20, Double Integrals on Rectangular Regions. We have now generalized limits and derivatives to functions of several variables. So the next step is to carry out a similar process with respect to integrations. As you know, single one variable integrals are developed from Riemann sums and are used to compute area of regions in R2. In a similar manner, we will use Riemann sums to develop double two variable and triple three variable integrals, which are used to compute volumes of solid regions in R3. These multiple integrals have many applications in statistics, science, and engineering, including calculating the mass, the center of mass, and moments of inertia of solids with a variable density. The overall lesson of the chapter is that we can integrate functions over most geometrical objects, from intervals on the x-axis to regions in the plane, bounded by curves to complicated three-dimensional solids. And that is the idea of this lecture. And hopefully, at the end of this lecture, you could be able to recognize when a function of two variables is integrable over rectangular regions. You could be able to recognize and use some of the properties of double integrals, and you can evaluate double integral over rectangular regions by writing it as an integrative integral. And you could be able to use a double integral to calculate the area of a region and volume under the surface. So up to this point, we understand that for single variable calculus, you have the function of the form f of x. And to take the derivative, you can do the first derivative f prime, you can do the second derivative f double prime, or the third derivative f triple prime for that matter. And for integral, to calculate the definite integral or indefinite integral of a function with respect to an independent variable, we use the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now we move on to function of several variables. And we can see the functions of the form f of x comma y or f of x, y, and z. And instead of just regular derivative f prime, we use partial derivative, partial f, partial x, partial f, partial y, or partial f, partial z. And we're going to evaluate the integral of uh, functions of several variables using double integrals or triple integral, depends on the problem, it depends on the functions. And the notation is going to be double integral of a function f of x comma y dA over a region R. Or you can use the notations of triple integral of the functions f, y, z, dv, over, over some region d. So in the first definitions, the integral of a function of two variables f of x comma y call a double integral and is denoted as the double integral of the function f of x comma y. And you evaluate this integral with respect to a cross-sectional area dA over domain d. It represents the sine volume of the solid region between the graph of f of x and the domain d in the xy plane, as shown in this particular figure. Okay, so you have the function in blue and the domain of consideration on the xy plane in d here, and you want to calculate the sine volume of the solid regions bounded between the graph of the function and the domain d on the xy plane. Again, this calculation represents the sine volume of the solid regions between the graph of the function and the domain d in the xy plane where the volume is positive for regions above the xy plane and or the volume is negative for regions below the xy plane. There are many similarities between double integral and single integrals. So double integrals are defined as limits of sum. And double integrals are evaluated using the fundamental theorem of calculus, but we have to use it twice, which we're going to see a little bit later when we get to example. So double integral are evaluated using the fundamental theorem of calculus. but we have to use it twice. For the first bullet point, the double integral are defined as limits of sum. That's what we're going to do um, in order to derive the formula for double integral. That is, we're going to use the limit of Riemann sums to calculate double integral. 
before we go to the derivations, I want to talk a little bit about D, which is the domain of the surface on the XY plane. So D in this case is the domain of the surface on the XY plane. In one variable calculus, or in one variable, we have that D is the set consists of all the X values such that X is between A and B. In two variables, we have D is a planned region whose boundary may be curved. Whose boundaries may be curved. So far, we have looked at the definitions of double integral. We see the notations of double integral and the idea of using double integral to evaluate the psi volume of solid region between the graph of the functions f of x, comma, y and the domain d in the x, y plane. Okay. The next topic is where we're going to derive a formula to evaluate the double integral. Like integrals in one variable, double integrals are defined through a three-step process of subdivision, summation, and passage to the limits. Now first, we're going to consider the regions A, B, and C, D. So this is the rectangular regions, where X is between A and B, and Y is between C and D. As you can see, this is the regions of considerations on the XY plane. Instead of writing the region in this particular manner, you can write that X is between A and B, and Y is between C and D. The first step is to subdivide A, B, and C, D by choosing the following partitions. That is, the interval from A to B is divided as follows. So A is equal to x0 less than x1, less than x2, less than dot 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 x sub n minus 1, less than x sub n. And x sub n is equal to B, which is the right end point. Similarly, I can partition the interval from C to D as follows. So C is equal to y sub 0, less than y1, less than y2, less than dot 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 y sub m minus 1 less than y sub m and equal to d which is the right end points. As you can see here, if you take the regions R, this is the rectangular regions, and zoom into that particular regions, you can see it's appear over here. So for x is between the interval from A to B, y is between the interval from C to D. Now we turn to the second figure. We're going to subdivide the interval from A to B using the following manner, and we're going to subdivide the interval from C to D in the following manner where n and m are integers. So this figure again is the rectangular regions with the width from a to b and the height from c to d. We're going to subdivide the interval from a to b in the following manner with an equal width of delta x sub i. And delta x sub i is equal to x sub i minus x sub i minus 1. And you're going to subdivide the interval from C to D with equal width of delta Y sub J. For delta Y sub J is equal to Y sub J minus Y sub J minus 1. So by subdividing the interval from A to B and the interval from C to D in this following manner, we create N by M grids of sub rectangles. We call them R, I, J. Now we're going to choose a sample point P, I, J in each R, I, J. So number three, choose a sample point P, I, J in each R, I, J as shown in this figure. Right, so for P, I, J is equal to X, I, J, comma, Y, I, J. Any point inside each rectangle of considerations. So the area of each Rij is calculated as delta Aij is equal to delta Xi times delta Yj. Where again, delta Xi is equal to X sub i minus X sub i minus 1. And delta Yj is equal to Yj minus Yj minus 1. Next, we form the Riemann sum with the function values f of Pij. Form the Riemann sum. with the function values f 
f of p i j. So by doing this, what you do is that you take the area of each sub rectangles and multiply that with the height, which is the function value. By doing that, we technically calculate the volume of one box at the location PIJ with the area of the form delta AIJ. So the volume of the sub rectangle RIJ is calculated as F of PIJ multiplied with delta AIJ. So the next step is to approximate the side volume of the solid region between the graph of the functions and the domain, in this case, the rectangular regions in the xy plane. At this point, you know how to calculate the volume of one box. You're going to sum up all the volume of the boxes used in approximating the volume of the solid regions. And it's going to be the sum n, comma m is approximately equal to the summations for i going from 1 to capital N. Take another sum for j going from 1 to capital M of f of p i j times delta a i j. And this is the approximations of the side volume of the solid region between the graph of f of x y and the domain d, in this case the rectangular region in the x y plane. So this is the approximations of the psi volume. of the solid regions between the graph of z equal to f of x comma y and the rectangular regions are so s sub n comma m is called the Riemann sum of the volumes of the boxes. Where f of p sub ij is the height and delta aij is the area. When you multiply together, you get volume. Now to increase the accuracy of the approximations, what you do is that you're gonna pass this n and m to the limit. That means you want to increase the number of boxes to evaluate the volume of the solid regions, and you want to increase that to infinity. Instead of an approximation, we're going to use the equal sign. That is, that is S sub n comma m equal to the limit as n and m go to infinity of the summation for i going from 1 to n, another summation for j going from 1 to m of f of p i j times delta a i j. And that's how you calculate the side volume of the solid regions. Now I'm going to put this into uh, definitions. So in definition 2, the double integral over rectangular regions. So the double integral of f of x y over a rectangle domain is defined as the limit, limit as n comma m go to infinity of the summation for i going from 1 to n and j going from 1 to m of f of p i j multiplied with delta a i j. Instead of keep writing the limits and the summation notations, we're going to use the notations as in double integral of the function f of x comma y dA over the domain. In this case, going to be the rectangular regions. If this limit exists, we say that f of x comma y is integrable over the domain D. As in single variable case, we often make use of linearity properties of the double integral. You're going to see some properties that you already know from single variable calculus. That is, the integral of a sum is the sum of integral. Integral of a difference is difference of integral. Integral of a constant multiple is that you can take the constant out of the integral operations and something like that. So assume that the functions f of x comma y and g of x comma y are integrable over the rectangular regions D. And D1 and D2 are sub-regions of D. So that is you can separate the region D into two different regions, D1 and D2. Or D is equal to D1 union with D2. Now for the first property, the sum of the function f of x comma y plus g of x comma y is integrable, and the double integral of f of x comma y plus g of x comma y dA over the domain D is equal to the double integral of f of x comma y dA 
over the region D plus the double integral over region D of G of x, y, dA. Now, for the second property, if C is a constant, then C times f of x, comma y is integrable, and the double integral of C times f of x, comma y, dA over the regions D or over the domain D can be written as C times double integral of the function f of x, comma y, dA over the domain D. So this formula tells you that you can scale the original function f of x, comma y, and then find the psi volume of the solid regions, or you can find the psi volume of the solid regions of the original function first, then scale the resulting value later. Now for number three, if again d is the union between the two regions d1 and d2, and there's no intersection between d1 and d2, except an overlap on the boundaries, then you have to follow in the properties that the double integral of the function f of x comma y dA over the domain D can be separated into two different double integrals, that is double integral of the function f of x comma y dA over regions D1 plus the double integral of f of x comma y dA over the domain D2. Now, in the case where f of x comma y can be written as a product of two functions g of x and h of y, then over a rectangular region that is x between a and b and y is between c and d for a, b, c, d are constant, the double integral can be written as double integral of f of x comma y dA over the regions r is equal to the product of two integrals, whereas the first integral is the definite integral from a to b of g of x dx times the definite integral from c to d of h of y dy.